So the game I'm playing today is called In Other Waters. This is a narrative-driven adventure game where you play as a xenobiologist who is searching for a missing colleague on a faraway exoplanet. This planet is comprised almost entirely of water and is populated heavily by alien life. Your job as this xenobiologist, whose name is Ellery for the record, is to scan the ocean floor, document all of the alien life that you come across, and ultimately find your missing partner, because supposedly he or she is still alive somewhere on this planet waiting to be rescued. However, things are not quite what they see him, as when Ellery arrives, she finds that the base that she has been sent to investigate has been abandoned. And in order to unlock the secrets about this planet's past, you're gonna have to travel deep into the depths of its oceans. And that's pretty much everything I know about the game. I actually have not played this game all that much off-screen. I only played it off-screen for about five minutes just to make sure that it worked. As with all these narrative-driven adventure games, I usually like to do these videos completely blind if I possibly can, just so that I don't spoil the story for myself ahead of time. This is probably not going to be a full playthrough, just for the record, like I want to get that out of the way immediately. I have no idea how long this game is, I imagine it's at least a few hours though. So this game has not been out for too long, as a matter of fact, at the time that I'm recording this video, this game only came out yesterday. And the reason why I was so intrigued by this game, and the reason that I wanted to play it so soon, is mostly because of its art style. You see, In Other Waters is not like most adventure games, because it's actually in 2D. And none of the characters in the game, including Ellery, are represented with 3D models. If anything, they're represented by yellow dots. And you'll even notice here on the title screen that the actual ocean floor of this alien planet is represented by a handful of contour lines. So the entire ocean floor of this planet is mapped out almost like a topographic map. It's a type of minimalism that I've never really seen any other game try to go for in the past. And that's one of the reasons why this game caught my attention, and this game has also been in development for a couple of years now. I think it was formally revealed back in 2018, if I remember correctly. It was developed by an indie studio called Jump Over the Age, and it was published by Fellow Traveler. Fellow Traveler are a fairly prolific indie games publisher. They're arguably best known for publishing some moderately successful indie titles like Hacknet and Orwell, and they've also published a couple of indie games based on the popular webcomic Homestuck. This game has been receiving some pretty solid reviews from a lot of professional gaming outlets. I can't really say the same thing about the Steam reviews just yet, because last time I checked, there were only 8 reviews for this game on Steam, which is not enough user reviews to generate an average user score. But after I finish recording this video, I'll probably go and check the Steam user reviews for this game again, just to see if there is finally a user score, and I'll probably put it up on the screen here as like an... Uh, not an annotation, but like a subtitle, showing you what the current user score for this game is on Steam, along with the total amount of reviewers. Also, an important note that I have to mention here is that you're not playing as Ellery herself in this game. Rather, you are playing as an artificial intelligence that is built into her diving suit. I forgot to mention that near the beginning of the video. You're actually playing as an AI in this game, and not the main protagonist herself. So, this is a lot more akin to narrative-driven games like Observation, which I still really want to play at some point. I've also seen some people compare this game to Metroid, just given the way that it builds its world. Like, the way in which In Other Waters presents its world, like all of its alien life forms and the different environments and whatnot, I've seen some people compare it favorably to Metroid. The game itself is not like Metroid at all, though, because it's completely in 2D and it's technically top-down as well. And also, I don't think it's possible to die in this game either. In Other Waters is supposed to be a non-violent game, which means there's no violence of any kind in this game, and I'm pretty sure it's not possible to die. I could be wrong about that, but we're gonna find out sooner or later, so with that being said, let's begin here. Right, so we are gonna go to a new game here. I've already watched the opening cinematic for the game. And that's about all that I've seen of the game, so I already know how exactly it starts, but for now, just create a new save file. Baikal Exoplanet Extraction. Transitioning. Please wait. Yeah, this is basically the loading screen. So we're just gonna wait for this here for just a few moments. 
And now we are going to start our adventure here, or at least start the uh, opening cinematic. Fellow Traveler presents... I'm already really liking this music, by the way. It's got these little yellow dots floating around. A jump over the age game. Indeed. I have no idea if this is the first game that Jump Over the Age made. I'm not sure if this is like their commercial debut or not. Created, designed, and written by Gareth Damian Martin. And a few other people, because I think there were more people than just him involved in this game's development. I think there was like seven people. Yeah, music and sound by Amos Roddy. I hope I'm pronouncing his first name correctly. God, I already just love this freaking introduction music. Additional programming by Chris Payen. See, that's the thing that caught me off guard immediately. Like, this freaking music, man. I just already in love with it. We haven't even begun the game yet. I'm already loving this music. In other waters. Indeed. So now we have even more points floating around the screen here. Error detected. Rebuilding memory. Yeah, so I think this is the AI that's getting rebooted here. Yeah, and then you have a bunch of characters on the screen right here, along with some very unsettling noises in the background. <laughs> log recovered, log 2189. Recovering last known log. Log recovered, dated 2189. User and sensorium disabled. There isn't any time left. This is going to be more restrictive than you're used to, but you are resourceful. I know you. I'm sorry, Oki. But I can't let them find you. I can't lose everything we've achieved here. And the final the final line is uh, too bugged out for, for me to read. <laughs> User disconnected. Continue with boot? Click or A. Yeah, we'll continue with the boot. Booting up here. So what I'm thinking is that it might have that may have possibly been the last person that was that was in this diving suit, maybe? I'm not really sure. Hello? Is someone there? This is Dr. Ellery Vass. I urgently need all systems of this suit activating. I've been locked out, and I'm 20 meters below the surface here. I say again, this is Dr. Ellery Vass. Can any operator personas on this suit please respond? Well, I can. Alright, good. Operator, activate all systems. Pilot authorization granted. Scan topography, heading, depth, oxygen, power, and utility. So this is like the, uh, this is the user interface of the... AI itself. I know this for a fact. Scan and topography readouts coming through. Looking good. Utility? Okay, utility's available. Let's see. Sampling, sample storage, terminal, and retrieval seem to be installed. Power? The power panel's activating. Plenty of juice. Oxygen? Oxygen panel's up, and rebreather functioning. I'm off reserve oxygen now. Heading? I'm seeing the heading panel coming online. Excellent. And depth. Okay, good. The dive panel is active, current reading of 20 meters. You don't seem to know what you're doing. You're not an operator, are you? Yes, I am, I think. I don't believe you. Operators are little more than voice-activated system dialogues. They don't respond like this. I knew there was something strange about this stuff when I got inside. It, it looks decades old. Look, we don't have time for this, so whatever program or system you are, I need you to work with me. You seem to respond to voice commands, so that's a start. I... we... need to head north. I'll explain once we get going, but right now I'm locked out of half the systems of the suit. Someone somehow has rewritten the permissions to only respond to internal messaging. That means you. So I'm going to need you to take control. Let's get moving. Take me north into the reef, please. Alright. So... One thing that I do know is that we can also, uh... Yeah, there's there's some other things that we can click on right here. This is a link. Unknown region, additional data required. I can't request a retrieval right now, though. I'm not entirely sure what this is. I'm gonna assume that maybe this is... A compass? Oh, no. This actually says biosample. So we can probably sample... Some... Stuff later on. <laughs> sure. Cat B... Category B biohazard. Sample storage. So I'm assuming this is like an inventory of some sort. And then we have map data. Power and oxygen connected. Yeah, ACS terminal. Can't really do anything with that right now. And we can also zoom this in by pressing these buttons right here. Indeed. Right, let's scan the surrounding locations then. We do have a point on the map. You can go click on that. I might just keep this zoomed in just so that it looks, uh... 
you know, just just to make it a lot clearer, or make the, the screen look a lot clearer, or make it a lot easier to see some different features on the, uh, the ocean surface here. Southern Gully, feature, observations, steep rock walls rise up towards the surface on either side. The floor is layered with pale sand. Right, so that's marked. And then, we can press this, there we go, Southern Gully vector clear, and then we can just travel over there. Indeed. Yeah, so Ellery just moves over there automatically, you have no control over Ellery herself. Good, whatever you're doing, it's working. Let's keep heading north. So we scan again. We have another vector right here. Narrow pass, feature. A boulder fills the passage, blocking out the warm light of Gleese 667 CC's three stars. Yeah, so this is the name of the planet itself that we're on right here. Let's refresh this. The vector is clear, which means we can continue onwards. Haven't seen this part of the game before, though, just for the record. Actually, wait a second. I, th I just realized what, uh, what this circle is for. I think we can, I think we can move this around in order to, like, change our trajectory. I think that's what that is. Alright, well, let's scan again. Yeah, let's get to this point. Gully opening. Here the passage opens out, back into the dappled light of the reef's shallows. So the vector is definitely clear. Okay, so let's just move there. Move there now. Nice. Okay. I guess we're- I guess we're just scanning stuff for now. I haven't seen this part of the game before. I haven't played up to this point. Okay, we got another little node right here. Soft currents. The softly flowing water is filled with glittering particles of organic matter, signs of rich and thriving life all around. Right, so this vector is also clear. Just move over there for now. Oh yeah, there we go. There's definitely some life forms here. Yeah, so all the other life forms are represented by yellow dots. Look, in the water. Are those spores? And those stalks to the west, they look like huge fungi. This is unbelievable. Actual alien life. How can Mine have kept this place a secret? I saw her notes at the base when I landed, and some telltale signs on approach, but here it is. The first extraterrestrial life humanity has ever discovered. I can't believe it. Alright, well, let's just scan. It seems like there's multiple nodes now. Okay, so we're, we're to first, then. I want to go and investigate some of this stuff. Strange stalks. Beds of these creatures coat the pale rocks. Are these plants or animals? They are unlike any earth coral or sponge. Well, let's go and check them. Vector is clear. Let's move over there for just a minute, okay? Okay, some of them are actually getting scared off. What were those creatures? They were hidden among the stalks. Quickly, try to get a scan. All right, we'll try to scan them, then. Here. Bed of stalks, fungal creature, made up of a series of stalks and plates attached to the rock. Color ranges from dark amber to acid yellow. These stalks are beautiful. I wonder how they feed, how they grow, how they communicate. This place, this planet, needs to be studied. Keep scanning creatures and I'll keep notes. Once we gather enough data, I can name and log each species. No matter what happens here, this is vital work. Okay, so I'm noticing that I also have a little data gathered thing right here, so I gotta, I gotta like, scan all of this stuff, I guess. Alright, let's move over here. Stock patch. The stalks are furred with spores, which appear to have drifted down from the northern part of the reef. Right, so we're gonna go move over there. Yeah, sample candidate as well, it also told me. So these stalks are covered in spores of all sizes. Perhaps we can sample one of the larger ones. So sampling is available. I'm in position. You'll have to take the sample. Opening up the sampling utility. I think it's this, right? I, I believe this is the interface, if I'm correct. Or is it this? No, it's definitely this. Okay, let's let's try this out right here. Hello, fungal seed? Okay, so can I... What do I do about this? Um, oh god, what is the... What in the world is this interface right here? Did I grab it? Okay, yeah, I did. We got one. Biological samples are vital tools for analyzing and understanding creatures. But this suit should also allow you to deploy any sample back into the ocean. Why don't you test it out? Hold and drag it over to the central compass. Oh, okay. Well, let's just put you back into the ocean then. Stock spore. Oh yeah, I just I just put you there and you kind of like just explode a little bit. Great, that's working as it should. Look, these creatures are coming for the spores. Why the why these ones in particular? I wonder. Perhaps different spores carry different compounds, each with a specific purpose or message. What do you think? Could the spores be a way of communicating between different colonies? Perhaps? I mean, why are you asking me? I know nothing about this freaking planet. Isn't that strange? Fungi on Earth form networks of exchange. Maybe these stocks do the same. Anyway, sorry. I'm not sure why I, uh... Let's keep moving. Alright, let's scan the surrounding area. Um, I guess... 
Yeah, we didn't actually check this out yet, right? Yeah, bed of stocks. This creature's external membrane appears to be made of layers of chitin, like earth arthropods or fungi. Okay. We can't actually go over there, so I guess we're only able to scan this stuff. Yeah. I'm seeing a complex pattern of contracting and expanding slits in this stock's membrane. Melts are sensing organs? These colonies are producing a shifting hum. Perhaps it's a form of communication between individuals. I'm seeing spores entering and exiting the slits on the surfaces of the stock. Something is being exchanged. Right, so this node right here, smooth boulder. This huge rock sits among layers of lichen. Could it have been thrown here during a volcanically active period in the planet's history? Oh uh, no, let's go investigate it. Why not? Move on over there, please and thank you. Right, what are we gonna find over here then? Let's, uh, well, let's scan the place again. Oh yeah, here we go. Got more, uh, stocks to scan here. The colonies seem to be broken up into individual patches, and then larger groups over a wide area. Reef stocks, new species logged. Fungal creature, which communicates through sound and spores, an interlocking ecosystem seeds across the reef. I'm uploading my initial notes. Let's call these reef stocks. We can classify the species in the lab. Alright, uh, actually, who- what is this thing that's moving around right here? What is that? Agile creature. Striped with luminous colors, these flexible flapping creatures move rapidly through the water with little effort. These are such lively creatures, and so colorful too. I'll start logging my observations. Yeah, I've also noticed that it doesn't give me that much time to actually read what Ellery is saying, because there's this little circle right here that gets filled with color, and once it finally gets filled with color, then she continues talking on her Owen. So it seems like the dialogue just kind of... Yeah, it, it kind of, like, cycles through her dialogue automatically here, like, if you leave it alone for too long. If I had to guess, it's probably a way of simulating that, you know, Ellery has a mind of her own, essentially. Or I guess to make her seem more human? I'm not really sure. I don't quite know what that's all about, but there's this other node we can go to. Silent Clearing. What is it that dictates the reef's growth patterns? Sunlight? The flow of water? Whatever it is, it must be absent here. Alright, let's move over to that Silent Clearing, then. Indeed. And a whole bunch of other little spore-like creatures just, yeah, kind of swimming around me here. Okay, so, doesn't look like there's anything else to scan, but we have more triangular noids. Stock patch? Among these spore-clogged stocks are piles of small stones. Could a creature have gathered them here, or just the currents? Let's go and... F yeah, let's go and investigate that then. Oh, wait, I pressed the wrong button. Hang on. <laughs> here we go. Let's actually try going over there correctly this time. Let's see what we have. Okay, so we do have sampling available. For what reason, though? Yeah, there's nothing else for us to, to scan here, except for this little guy. These creatures appear to maneuver with a series of siphon jets concealed beneath their folded mantles. They are incredibly fast. Okay. What do we need sampling for? Let's move this over here. Oh, okay. Fungal, 5%, seed 0%. Another stock spore. Okay. So we'll just take that. Okay. Interesting, so what we have here? A stock spore containing a complex cocktail of minerals and compounds. Yeah, but it told us we could deploy this little guy right here, right? Yeah, deploy inside the line? Okay. Yeah, and all these little creatures just come towards it. Okay, that's- that's interesting. So I can kind of, like, control their movements with that. What is this southern nursery? Protected by the ridges from the strong northern currents, this could be a safe haven for younger, softer species. Let's try going over there, then. Seems like it's a node that I haven't discovered yet, which is why I want to go towards it. Yeah, and there's more little creatures like this over here. Flitting around the reef, these creatures chase stock spores with green enthusiasm. Is this their primary food source? These creatures aggressively pursue certain spores, but ignore others completely. Can they detect differences in mineral content? Alright, what else do we have over here? Okay, I, I might have to go to another, uh... Yeah, another vector that I've already been to, or another noid. Yeah, here we go, it's this one that I'm missing. Spore flow. Spores from the main part of the reef are brought into the southern nurseries here by a steady current. Let me try moving over there. Just for now. Hey, can I ask you something? Sure. I've worked with AI programs before, but you aren't like them. They are predictable, programmatic, dull. Their intelligence allows them to log and process data, that's all. But you... You're different. I feel like you are... alive. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes? Then you are different. I'm glad I'm not just imagining it. But what are you? And what are you doing in this suit? You are asking me plenty of questions that I do not currently have the answers to, my friend. 
Let's just move on for now. Northern Current. The current running into the reef slows here, but further north, the water whips down the rift with incredible speed. Right. I don't want to hang around these areas for too long. I do want to try and at least make some progress here. Let's just... Let's just keep going. Right, so I... Did I already scan this? I guess I did. Okay, yeah, data, ga data gathered. Okay, then what is this over here? Long Rift. Wide and long with sheer rock walls on either side, this deep rift channels unpredictable currents. Sounds dangerous, let's go over there. <laughs> right, let's see what we got. Let's try scanning. Oh, we can keep going down deeper into it. Strong current, flecked with spores, this water runs fast and hard. The suit can't push any further north here without better propulsion. Oh, this vector is blocked. Ah, okay, so we can't actually go over here right now. Okay, so one thing that I do know is that we can get upgrades for the suit later on, for Ellery's diving suit. So, once we collect some certain upgrade, we'll probably be able to go over here. I guess we'll have to wait on that for now, though. So, Overgrown Arch. This arch is covered in hardened stalks. Perhaps the slow current passing through brought their spores to settle here. Wow, okay. My brain did something really weird when I was reading that, and... <laughs> I don't think my brain noticed the comma in the middle of that sentence, but anyway. Yeah, this vector's clear, so let's move over this way. Here we go. Alright, scan again. Let's see what we have. Oh, we got more stuff we can scan. Large stock. Static creature, made up of one huge flexible stock. Unclear if swaying is due to current or is produced by the stock's own body. These huge stalks are incredible, each one a vertical ecosystem. They are leaking spores into the water as the fruiting bodies attached to their skin bloom. This is very interesting. Oh, yeah, they're also kind of moving around, too. Many of these stalks are leaking particles into the water as they sway. Are those spores or something else? I'm also noticing that, too. You notice the little, like, uh... Yeah, the little dark dots that are kind of, like, floating out of them and floating away. Jeez, you got a, like, very big dot right over here. I don't know what that is. Large growths. These larger stalks... These larger stalks sway all around this basin. They almost resemble branchless trees bending in a storm move over there. Let's try to get a closer view of them. Why don't we? Oh? Did you see that? The stalks responded to our movement. They extended as we passed through the arch. Perhaps it was the sound we made when we moved through? We should be careful not to get trapped here. The suit's power capacity is limited. Yeah, so th does that mean we're not going to be able to go back there, though? Because it seems like that's blocked off now. Well, either way, let's scan. Scan this. The chitin of the stalk's membrane is very hard, but flexibility is given by a surface of overlapping plates. Feeding grounds. There is a lot of activity among the rocks ahead. Creatures are grazing on and living among the stalks, forming a complex ecosystem. Let's try getting a closer look at that, shall we? I really want to- oh my god, there's a lot of them, yeah! Look, over to the southwest. That stalk is totally calcified. Looks like a good sample candidate. Is it? Oh wow, there's so many things to scan here. The plates of the stalk's surface passing over one another must be producing the distinctive hum that can be heard. These creatures must be related to the other stalks on the reef, but seem to have a separate purpose to the lower beds. It's safe to assume that the singing of these stalks relates to the communication between colonies seen elsewhere on the reef. New species logged. A sing stalk. Large stalks which sway, producing a distinctive hummer growin. Part of the network of stalks which is found across the reef. I've named these sing stalks for what strange hum they produce. What is its premise, or what is its precise function, I wonder? Not sure. Calcified stalk. This huge stalk is totally still. Its plates harden into a rocky shell. Can it be revived? Or is this what death looks like here? It does say I can sample this, so let's get a closer look. Let's see about this here. The stalk looks dead. Open up the sampling panel and see if we can extract some of the outer membrane. There's lots of dead material. There's lots of dead material here, so we should be able to take multiple samples. All right. Well, let's see here. Here's one sample. Fungal 15%, tissue 0%. We'll grab that one first. And there's apparently another one right over here. Grab that one too. Okay, so the Chitin appears to be hardened with calcium carbonate. That could be useful if we need to boost our power. The suit is able to metabolize organic compounds to produce fuel. Just drag them to the power panel. The suit displays how much oxygen or power each sample can produce. No point wasting important samples. With these, we can keep one sample so we can analyze it back on the base and use the other for a power boost. Okay, so could we 
Can we possibly use this now? Yeah, stock bark. A sample of the chitinous membrane from a stock. So can I drag this to the power? Ah, okay, yeah, we can. Alright. Well, in that case, we'll just use that one for now, just to boost our power, and then we'll just, uh... Yeah, maybe we'll save the other one for now, because I'd rather not let it go to waste. In the meantime, here's another creature we can sample. A shelled creature. Mobile creature with a large translucent shell and four swimming appendages which it uses in a rapid rowing motion. These creatures have such beautiful translucent shells. I'll start logging data on them as we find them. God, this is turning- this is already turning into another one of those videos where I just cannot read for the life of me. The space between the rocks here is thick with stalks. The elaborate patterns they trace across the reef are beautiful. To go over there. Because I want to. Let's go. Oh, am I scaring someone off? Okay, yeah, he's- he just left. All right. Let's see what we have here. Oh, we can scan him, actually. Okay, I got him. The relationship between these creatures and the stocks are unclear, but they camouflage themselves among the amber colony is... There is another one over here. Bear Canyon. The rocks here are clear of stocks and other growths. Is their absence a territorial marker, or just a side effect of the conditions of these waters? Let's move over that way. Let's see what we have. Let's just see what we got. I'm gonna close this for the time being. I don't really need it open right now. Yeah, nothing over here, but there is another another marker, Cavern Edge. A large cavern drops down into the reef here. Its entrance is shadowed by the surrounding rocks. Just move over there just to see what the what there is. This kind of looks like a dead end though. No, it's not a dead end. There is something else there. Southern Cavern. The water is still in the yawning entrance to the cavern. There are no signs of stocks or other reef life around the entrance, and we probably can't go there, can we? No, we can! Vector clear descent possible. Okay, well, before we do that, before we do that, I still think there's some other things that I haven't scanned yet. I'm pretty sure I'm missing, so how about I go grab those first, and then we'll, we'll consider our, uh, we'll consider descent- actually, no. Can we not go back? Oh, I might not be able to go back, because this vector seems to be blocked now. Can we- No, we actually can't go back anymore. They're, the little spores are blocking off that vector. Okay, so I guess we have no choice but to continue downwards then. Okay, fine. They're gonna force me to do this. I don't know, maybe we can maybe we can scan some more creatures down here, perhaps. I don't know. Let's just let's find out. Let's descend. What about those strong currents that we saw earlier though? Are we gonna be able to to visit them later? I'm not sure, but we're going down into the depths. Here we go. Twenty-eight meters. Alright. Oh, it's a lot darker in here now. I kinda like it. It's getting- it's getting a little moody here now. I'm into it. I'm okay with it. What is this? Stock patches. The patchy sunlight coming through the broken cavern roof is enough to allow stocks to grow here, if that is what they require. Okay, well let's move that way. Let's move over this way then. Alright. So, oh yeah, there's- there's more stuff to scan here. Tall stock. A tall, bubble-coated stalk which sits among reef, co uh, reef stock colonies, covered in wide, arising pores. Irising pores? These tall stalks seem to watch over the smaller colonies. I'll start logging notes. Alright, you do that, Ellery. Glittering stalk. A soft, spun-light- soft sunlight- Wow, I really cannot read today, Jesus Christ. Soft sunlight spills down into a long, thin stalk, stretching towards the light. A coating of large, glassy bubbles glitters on its skin. Hmm. Oh, this is a sample candidate as well, so obviously I'm gonna go and check this out. Yep, sampling available. Let's, let's figure this out here. Let's see what we got. Lichen, 0%. Signal, 10%. Okay. What does it mean by signal? Not sure what they mean by that exactly, but let's get some, let's get some samples. First and foremost. Are there any more? These gaseous bubbles are intriguing. The interior gas is at an elevated pressure. If this membrane ruptured, the sac would screech as it depressurized. Is this part of the stock communication system we've seen across the reef? Wait, I have an idea. Try deploying one by that blocked tunnel over there. I want to see how the stocks react. Just drag one over. Okay, well hang on, there's, there's another sample I can collect here. Okay, there's three of them. So, uh, like this over right here? Oh, cool. Yeah, they actually reacted to it. They're gone now. They retracted. This bubbles must be some kind of signal system. I'll call them shrill sacks for that squeak. God, for that squeak. I was trying to burp there when I was saying that. We can use these to get through the heavy growth ahead. Let's get moving. All right, I'm gonna. Ha I'm probably gonna have to uh, hold on to these for now. I think it would be best if I did. Okay, in that case, we're just gonna close all that. Okay, let's keep going then. Over here. 
Clog tunnel. Stocks mesh across the cavern here, hardened into a near solid wall of tubes and plates. Well, not anymore, because I, like, killed all of them. <laughs> okay, that's probably what they meant by signal, actually. I'm just realizing. Okay, I'm starting to understand. Blind corner. The cavern curves away in both directions here. It's hard to see the way ahead. Uh-oh. Well, I hope we don't get lost down here. Hopefully not. I also notice that I'm starting to run out of power a little bit. So I guess you're wondering where we're heading. There's a way station just north of here, on a finger of this reef. I want to find it. My shuttle touched down just hours ago at a floating research base to the south. That's where I found the suit. I'm here looking for, uh, for Dr. Mine Nomura, chasing a message, all the way from Earth. I must sound mad, coming out here, to a planet in the tail of Scorpius, just to follow a message. Wait, you... do know where we are. Don't you? Not really. I might as well just go for honesty here, because I, I don't know where the hell we are. But how? We are on Glee 667CC, a supposedly unremarkable world. If it wasn't for all this life, somehow the exoplanet Extraction Corpse must have passed it by. But how did Mighty know to come here? Is that why she contacted me? To verify her discovery. But then, where is she? Okay, so... The person we're looking for is another is another woman, then. Okay, at least we established that. Look, let's find that way station. Then I can start piecing together what's going on. Alright. Let's keep on going, then. Thin passage. The cavern narrows here and small eddies of water twirl in the silt. Move over this way. Yeah, so I noticed that my power depletes very slowly whenever I move. Okay, what is this? Cavern entrance. A current can be felt drifting through the cavern entrance, bringing with it warm clouds of silt. Ascend possible. Okay, so we're going back up. Alright. Let's go back up to the surface then. Or go back up to a higher... higher elevation. There we go. Nice, we're back out. But probably not the location we once were. No, absolutely not, because there's new nodes here. Stocks of this kind seem to produce different bubbles depending on the nearby stocks. They are the protectors of their colonies. I can't help but feel some unseen processes shaping the growth patterns of this reef. What invisible barriers am I crossing? Large clearing. Let's go over that way. I mean, we didn't we didn't travel all too much. All right, let's go and investigate these glittering stalks then. This thin stalk sits this thin stalk sits among a bed of other growths, exuding bright bubbles through its pores. Yeah, this is another sample candidate, so go and sample it. All right, let's 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 see about this here. What do we have. Shrill sack. Signal 10%. Okay, we we may need more of these. We may possibly need more of these later on. So might as well go and pick them up. And here we go. Let's just pick let's pick all of them up. All of them are gonna get picked up here. There we go. Very nice. God, we got so many of them now. Alright. Cool then. Just put that in our inventory for now. Let's move over this way. Rock outcrop. The scattered boulders and steep rifts of the southern reef suggest a violent geological past. Interesting. Okay, let's, let's just move over this way, then. And what, we all, what else do we have? What is this node? Isolated stock. Unlike the other specimens, this large stock sits alone, away from the lower beds. It is hard to tell if this is the beginning of a colony or its end. Can we sample it? Possibly? No? I guess not, but there's another another moving thing over here. Shelled creature. These creatures glide among the reef stalks with great care and precision. They appear to be grazing on them. So this is a stock passage. The stocks are more sparse between these rock outcrops. This might be the easiest path north, if I can clear the way. Well, thankfully we have all those, like, signal things or whatever the heck they were called. Shrill sacks or whatever. So if that's the case, let's put them to good use. Deep forest. The stocks are so, so thick here. A sea of amber waving fingers that must be cleared before we can pass through. Yeah, so the vector is blocked. Okay, well then I have, I have a solution. Actually, wait. There's another note over here. The relative calm of this basin means the water is clogged with spores released by the larger stocks. Actually, can we go down here first? I didn't notice this, uh, this note here before. Oh god, we're boxed in. Well, that shouldn't be too big of an issue, right? Forest path. The growth gets heavier as we travel north into the stock forest. Something about giving it that name makes it feel safer, more familiar. Okay, yeah. So, I've got, I've got a solution for this. We're gonna use, uh... Yeah, let's use one of these. There we go. Get the heck out of here, please. There we go. Vector clear. Let's move on. Let's move on with our lives, then. Indeed. 
Alright, so there's definitely more where that came from. Actually, it just kind of looks like we're circling back around. I think we're moving back to an area we've already been to, because I've already scanned this node, apparently. Okay, well, in that case, we might need to go over here, then. There we go. So this, uh, this node shouldn't be blocked off anymore. Hopefully. Yes, indeed, we can go there now. Okay. Yeah, I think we were actually going back to an area that we had already been to by going down, uh, to the southeast. I'm almost certain of it, so... How about we just continue on for now? Actually, there's a lot more creatures we can scan. A delicate set of feeding appendages beneath the creature's shell seem to scrape the outer membrane of the stalks away. And what is this? Tall stalk. Some creatures target these tall stalks directly, per perhaps because they keep them away from the other softer stalks nearby? Occasionally, when the creature scrapes the stalks too aggressively, they retract and let out a distinctive sing- uh, let out a dis- a defensive signal! For some reason, I thought that said distinctive to nearby colonies. Good god. Ellery, would you like to, uh, just read all this crap out for me, please? Because I- I think I've already proven that I'm basically dyslexic at this point. Four is clearing. Navigating these dense growths is like finding your way in a labyrinth, moving from clearing to clearing with little sense of what's ahead. Well, let's keep moving onwards anyway. Gotta continue on with the mission here. What else we got? Oh, we got two different nodes. Glittering stalk. Bubbles like huge pearls glint among the stalks. How did the tall stalks produce these strange screeching sacks? A sample candidate. That'll probably allow us to continue on. Because this place is starting to become densely populated with spores. So I think we're gonna need more shrill sacks if we want to get through. So let's go and grab some of them. There we go. That's two, and there's, there's another one somewhere. Here we are. Get those. Nice. Okay, so where else could I possibly go? Okay, well, I can scan this. Signal stock. Tall bubble-producing stocks that protect and monitor stock colonies. A key part of the stock network that stretches across the reef. I'm gonna call these signal stocks for the signaling role they play in the stock ecology. Okay. Suit yourself, Ellery. Okay, I'm gonna destroy this first. There we are. Alright, let's continue onwards over here. Stock patterns. The growth patterns of the stocks suggest a complex territorial network. Are we underestimating the complexity of these life forms? Let's see what's over this way. Oh, there's some guy following me right here. How you doing? Alright. Two different nodes we can inspect here. Clear path. East and west are stocks as far as the eye can see. They fade off into the slit like the towers of a miniature city. Let's move over here quickly then, in that case. And then there's another node off to the right. Oh, but there's more creatures we can... we can scan first. There seems to be some tolerance for the creatures scraping by the stocks. They only warn the creature when it cuts too deeply. Oh god, there's three different nodes that we can visit here. Oh god. Which, which way to go first, though? That's- that's what I have to try and figure out. I we could try going to the right, because I'm pretty sure I saw another guy that I could scan before. Glittering stock. More bubble-producing stocks. Are they sentries designed for early warnings? Or last-ditch defenses of the colony's core? Yeah, this guy right here. Stock scraper. A large creature with a translucent shell and jointed legs for swimming and feeding. Grazes on the membranes of reef stocks. I'm naming these stock scrapers. For obvious reasons. You can check my notes back at the base. Alright. Well, let's, uh, yeah, let's move over there, because there's more samples we can grab, so might as well. Okay, sampling is available. Let's go and grab some more. Yeah, there's just more shrill sacks. I think it would definitely be a good idea to grab as many of these as I possibly can if we can actually remove spores out of the way. We can get to different locations. Yeah, but we're completely full now, so we're gonna have to use them sooner, sooner than later. Okay, let's go over this way. Spore clusters. Spores from the stalks seem to be massing here in large clumps. This might be a good place to sample them. Okay, another... another sampler? Well, I, I have a full inventory, though, so it's probably not gonna allow me to do this right now. Well, let's see if it does. Let's just see. Oh yeah, it's, I'm, I'm full. Okay, so hang on. Wait, there's more guys that we can... that we can scan here. Agile creature. I've noticed smaller spotted variants of these creatures. Another species? Or perhaps sexual dimorphism? These might be the males. And what about this guy? Spore catcher. Agile jet-propelled creatures with colorful mantles, found hidden amongst reef stock colonies feeding on their spores. I'm gonna call these spore catchers, as they are so eager to gather the stock spores. Alright. Well, hang on. I gotta go and, and get rid of some stuff in my inventory first, and I'm not just gonna, you know, just throw them out altogether. I'm gonna put them to good use, so give me a minute. There's another note over here, Upper Forest. This isn't a forest, but it carries the atmosphere of one, being immersed in interlocking natural processes of life and death. This vector is blocked. 
And I believe we can just... Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, deploy inside. Wait, I am trying to do that. Hang on a second. There we go. All right, nice. So now what if I were to grab a sample of at least one of these things? Stock spore, fungal, seed. Okay, yeah, so... I only have enough space for one, though. Just, just for now. Yeah. But then where could I possibly place this? Like, over, over here? I mean, is there any real reason to, to throwing the stock spores away other than, you know, just causing more spores to spawn? And that has to have a much bigger use than just that, right? Right, well, I took all the samples I possibly could and I just, I just threw them out to spawn some spores. Still not entirely sure what that's useful for, though. I haven't really found, like, a proper use for that yet. Okay, one thing I noticed is that this vector over here got blocked again, somehow. So I guess the spores actually grow back after a little while, if I had to guess. That's it. We are through. This place is overwhelming. So many new species. This is the central reef. I saw in Manet's maps that this shell flattens out here. Alright. Yeah, there's another another place we can go to. Piled stones. A set of smooth stones sitting together in a pile. Could a creature have gathered these here? Is this a nest? Yeah, you know what? We're just gonna we're just gonna keep moving on for now, because I think I already have enough shrill sacks that'll uh you know, I, I think I'll be good for a little while. I think I have way more than enough. Shady outcrop. The water beneath this outcrop feels cool. Oceanic. Soft currents scrape sand from the rock face. Alright, let's move over this way then. Keep scanning. Yeah, there's two of them. Okay. Rippling silt. Ripples of silt bounce sunlight back up through the water, giving it a golden glow. That sounds nice. Move over this way. Okay, so there does seem to be another another thing we can do here. What is this? Forest edge. The last line of thick stalks before the shady plains of the central reef. This vector is blocked. But I already know exactly what to do here. So get rid of this. And now move over this way. Please and thank you. Right, so is there another... Oh, there's definitely another node that I went past. Twin stones. These two boulders are covered with tiny stalks. A coating of amber fur waving in the currents. Right, well that's interesting, but is there another... Does this just lead back around? Yeah, it kind of seems like it does, okay. Then we might just we might just be done with this location then, because it just seems like it loops back around, so... How about we just continue on for the time being? Yeah, let's go to this node. Central Plain. The center of the reef is flat and sandy, with few rocks to attach to the stalks struggle to seed the waters. Alright, let's move this way. I'm seeing more... Yeah, there it is. I see the way station ahead. Alright, I see also... I also see more spores, though. Is this the way station? Yes. A way station set up by Mine Nomura. It's seen better day is, but it still functions beneath the coating of stocks. Alright, well let's go over there then. Let's figure out. Let's figure out what to do. This place is looking a little worse for wear. Let me see if I can find an access port. Mine never did take care of her equipment. Some things never change. Sorry. Give me a sec. I'm just trying to... Got it! Okay. We should be able to access any data stored here. Just open the terminal and take a look. Alright, terminal available. Let's check it out. Spoofing user Dr. Mine Nomura, last access, history cleared, log download, power oxygen. Uh. Ooh, okay. So I can use the way station to replenish my power. And yes, by the way, I was keeping an eye on my power because I noticed that it was starting to deplete a lot. Alright, so that's interesting. And I don't really need to replenish my oxygen, but, I mean, might as well. My oxygen hasn't deplenished at all, actually. I guess it doesn't when you're, uh... Yeah, because we're only at a depth of 20 meters, so I imagine it would only begin to deplete very quickly once I go deeper down into the into the depths. I do know that it is possible to sink a lot deeper than just 20 meters. I think you can go as far down as, like, 1500 meters at a much later point in the game, according to, uh, a preview screenshot that I saw of this game a couple of days ago. Yeah, so this goes- this goes a lot deeper. Let's- let's, uh, check the map data for now, then. Let's see. Sync complete. Data released to pilot's console. Logs have been cleared. I expected that, given the secrecy my name seems to be operating under. But the map data mentions something Mine calls the Bloom, out across the Northern Rift. She's been going back and forth to something there, studying it. A unique species, perhaps. Mine, what were you doing there? Why were you keeping this discovery from the world? From me? I'm talking to myself again. Or to... whatever you are. Sorry, I don't mean... 
Well, let's head back to the research base. I need to think. With this way station operational, we can call in the base's retrieval drone from the utility panel. This drone will be able to pick us up from any area we've got map data for. Let's head to the base. I've got a lot to figure out. Alright, so let's go over here. Oh, this is what the link is for, okay. Mapped region connection available request retrieval. Uh... Can, can we not go there right now? Uh, wait. It's not allowing me to request a retrieval right now. Oh, here we go. I, I was clicking on the wrong button. I didn't realize that uh, this link button on top was what I had to click on. I didn't realize it was uh, it was lit up. Okay, connection complete, drone ready. But I... Hang on a second. I noticed that there's other nodes over here. I don't think we're gonna go and visit them right now, but... Yeah, smooth pebbles, large smooth pebbles sit in the sand, and beyond I can see the suns catching the amber terraces of another stock forest. Sandy Shelf. The pale sand is unmoving here, but to the north I can see the yawning chasm and strong currents of a wide rift. And then the blooming stalk. The stalk is leaking spores from a wide slit in its side. They are carried across the soft sand by the currents coming from the east reef. Yeah, and you can see the little spores uh, just kind of moving across. And yeah, they're, they're emanating out of it. So can I... Ah, uh, I see. So it doesn't seem like I can actually... Can I... Well, hang on a second. Can I not... Okay, no, it's not even letting me go back to the node I was previously at. So, no. I, I have to summon the drone in. Okay, so I can't I can't move anywhere else. Alright, fine then. Request retrieval. Let's get out of here. Alright. Going back to the research base. Safe mode restarting. Resyncing with Baikal operating system. Downtime 4.2 hours. Oh, man. Okay. Sample store, biohazard... Hey, are you back online? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm back online. Pretty sharp work for a biologist, if I do say so myself. Hooking up that strange casing of yours to the base took some work. And the operating system here does not play nicely with whatever you are. But you should have access to select subsystems of the stack now. My name looks to have repurposed some of them, so not everything is functional. Comms are shot, the generator's only partially working, and one of the retrieval drones is missing. But I've booted up the dive base mapping systems and sample storage. The lab is also online, with analysis tools and an integrated taxonomy for logging creatures. Take a look. I've already logged the creatures we discovered on our last dive. For any log creatures, I'll also put sample requests in their taxonomy entries. To fulfill these requests, just find and transfer the samples to the lab, then analyze them. I can then use that data to add to the creature study. We need to register these species. Head down to the lab level and take a look. I'll also mark sample requests on the dive map. That way we can grab key samples for our studies while we're out in the ocean. And we are going back out soon. While you were offline, I spotted a signal. A suit transponder. You can see its location on the dive map. I want to find it. A suit transponder means a suit. And a suit means... My name. I'll need your help. That suit takes both of us to pilot it. And it's the only one I've got. Once you're done exploring the base, load into the dive map. We can head out from there. Okay. So, let's see what we have then. Life support. Yeah, Ellery Vast Secure Protocol Oversight Active. Comm signal? Signal error? Antenna damage? Automatic repair not possible? Offsite assistance needed? Contact Baikal. Okay. Let's see about this taxonomy here. Yeah. Biohazard Laboratory activated. Oh god, lab, base. There's nothing in here for me to mess around with right now. Taxonomy? Amelia Novi Animals Fungi, fungi Novi. Plantae novi, bacteria novi. Okay, my myomidia, soft bodies, spore catcher. Okay, yeah. Well, I'm not sure if I'm gonna read through all of that. You can just pause the video if you guys want to read through this uh this long description right here. Uh, food sample analysis requested. Okay, so there's no behavior right here. No theories. Egg sample analysis. A sketch. Study completion required. Oh, so we're still we're still missing a lot of information about these guys. Well, I would imagine, because we've only scanned them. We've only scanned, like, their actual, like, observations. Or, we, we've we only, uh, documented what we've observed about these creatures so far. We don't know anything about their, uh, you know, what they actually eat or their actual behaviors. We don't know anything about their reproductive cycles. Like, we, we know absolutely nothing. Yeah, none of the sketches are complete either. Shell sample analysis. Stock scraper, right? Fungi novi. We have... Yeah, Colonia, fungal stocks. Oh, we have three of them. Okay. 
There's a description for that. Root sample required. Spore sample required. Oh, wait, that's not what I wanted to do. Sing stock? Right, there's a description. Bark sample. Tissue sample. Huh. Okay. Signal. Oh my god, I love this music, man. Signal stock. I'm sorry, I already don't remember the name of the guy who produced the music for this game. Amos Roddy, I think? My god, man, you did an excellent job with this game soundtrack. I haven't even, I haven't even heard, like, the majority of the game soundtrack yet, and I'm already loving it, though. Bubble sample. Another tissue sample. That's for the signal stocks. And then Plantae Novi. So Plantae Novi we don't currently have anything for, for plants or bacteria. Yeah, so we don't, we don't have anything, anything known about these creatures yet. Yeah, there's nothing we can, well, actually, hang on. Oh, this must be, like, a second page of the inventory or something. Okay, something in the bay right here. Okay, so this is showing our inventory. So I guess... Ah, okay. So we can we can move stuff out of our inventory and just put it back into uh, the base. Like, the base has a massive inventory of its own, it seems. Okay. But would I like to maybe just move all these shrill sacks back into the base for now? Oh, they stack. Okay, thank God for that. They actually stack. That's great. Okay, cool. Maybe we can just move all of them back into uh, the base for now, just to keep them as storage, perhaps? Because this stock bark right here I'd kind of like to keep on me for now, because I can replenish my power with it in case it does end up getting very low, and I'm not able to find a way station anywhere. I can probably pick up more shrill sacks later on from some other, uh... Yeah, from, from some other uh, signals that I come across. Yeah, signal, signal stocks, I think that's what they were called, right? Uh, is that what they were called? Yeah, signal stock. Yeah, so we get, we get the, we get the shrill sacks from the signal stocks. We'll probably be able to find more of those later. I would imagine. There's also this dive map right here. Um, I, I guess we can't really do anything else right now, can we? This is life support. Uh, okay, this is a personal log of... Ellery Vass? Okay. Uh, once again, I'm not gonna read this just to save time, but again, you guys can just read it if you pause the video. Oh, there's somebody moving around in this, uh, in this base right here. I'm wondering if that might be Ellery. I think that's probably Ellery moving around, right? If I had to guess. I imagine this is probably Ellery just walking around the, uh, walking around the base here, around the way station. Because I don't, I don't know who else that could possibly be, or what that could possibly be. It's gotta be Ellery. I guess there's not really anything else to see here, but can we go down to med subject? Yeah, none active, medical assessment due, nothing here. The generator's active, running at 34% efficiency, tidal turbines active, core stable. And then the observation blister, sonar system required crew, this one is inactive. I don't really know what we could, what we could uh, do with that right now. Yeah, I can't do anything with the generator, the generator's kind of just doing its own thing at the moment. Yeah, we've already looked at the taxonomy. We just put our shrill sacks into the base right now just to keep them in storage in case we need them later on. I also just want to, like, empty my inventory so I can actually pick up some more samples, of course. I guess there's not really anything else for us to do here, right? Because we, we can't repair this antenna right now. I guess all we can do right now is just contact the dive map. Ah, okay. So, this is what we've mapped out so far. I guess we can just dive anywhere, if I had to guess. What is this? The base has detected a suit transponder at these coordinates. Could this be mine? We'll have to head to the East Reef to find out. Okay, so, can we only... Okay, so we can only dive at the way stations, though. Mine's notes mention something called the bloom across this rift, but until we have stronger propulsion, we won't be able to cross it. Alright, well, I kind of like to see what exactly that uh, transponder is then, or what that signal is, so I guess we'll just dive back for now, because I guess we can't really do anything else. We'll just try making our way over there. Yeah, it takes us back over this way. Alright. Does it allow us to, to move anywhere now? Yeah, it seems like it does. Wait, let me let me zoom in here, get a better look. Okay, so what if we were to try going over, over this way just to see what we can find? Let's just see. Oh yeah, there's more there's more signals here. Calm waters. The central reef way station lies within a bubble of calm, but just to its north, a massive rift brings strong currents through the reef. Okay, so we can't go over there right now. Or maybe the the signal that we're getting from the east reef might even be one of our upgrades. I mean, who knows for sure. 
bare boulders? The stalks are noticeably absent from the sides of this northern rift. Why did they leave such a clear buffer zone beside it? What does this one say? Empty shelf? I'll tell you the shimmering parameter of the western stock forest. Almost nothing lives or grows on this finger of the reef. And rift passage. The passage between these rocks leads out into the howling currents of the northern rift. Yeah, so let's try going over this way first. I just want to see if maybe there's another... Yeah, there is another node. Northern Rift. The Northern Rift is the largest of the cuts into the Central Reef. Crossing it without some way of navigating its currents would be suicide. And this is probably... No, the vector is clear. But we probably can't go over the Rift, I imagine. Impressive. The split in the shelf is incredibly wide and deep. Those currents would smash us against the rocks if we swam out into the flow. We're going to need better equipment if we want to cross that monster. And there is another node. Strong currents. Flex of spores and other organic material whip past in the current, dragging to the dense stock patches in the west. And sure enough, the vector is blocked. Okay. Let's go back then. There's another node over here. Open sand. This western side of the finger becomes increasingly enclosed by rocky outcrops as it leads towards the shallower water. Let's try moving over here. I want to try and cover all the nodes that I haven't, uh, I haven't come across yet. Split boulders? Some ruined equipment lies in the shelter of two boulders. An early way station site, perhaps. Oh? Can we inspect anything over here? Possibly? No? Okay, what is this one, then? Metal debris? Looks like Mine has had to salvage parts of the base to build what she needed to survive. She must have been here many months before I arrived. Open sand. Across the open sand, I can see the faint shapes of stock colonies rising up in ordered rowes. Okay, I'm gonna try going over here first. Can I not inspect this metal debris at all? No, I guess I can't. Okay, there's no other new nodes over here. Okay, then what about this one? If this even leads to anywhere. God, there's so many places we could explore, though. Yeah, what is this one? Patterns of stalks stretch back into the distance, pathways and terraces of some unknown design. This must be the western stock forest. And then glittering stock, another sample candidate. At the edge of the strange terraces of this underwater forest, this stock, this stock sits like a sentry with a coating of bubbles. Okay, well, hang on. We could probably get more... Hang on. What, what was this again? Yes, these are actually more shrill sacks. Okay, well, this is kind of what I want. This is actually what I would, what I would like. So that way, if there's more stocks blocking our path, and just take them out. Take them out quickly. Nice, okay. And just hold on to that for now. Okay, well, all that's good and all, but I'd kind of like to go to the Eastern Reef just to see what I can find, because I'd like to go and investigate that other signal. So let's, let's go and see here. Layered outcrop. The pale strata of this rock tell an ancient story. Might there be a fossil record within such rocks waiting to be discovered? Northern Passage. Were these rifts and canyons really carved by the currents, or are they violent fractures, now smoothed by erosion? And a towering outcrop. This feature rises steeply towards the jagged edge of the reef, splitting the strong currents like the head of an axe. Okay, so... The signal is over here, I believe. So how about we try going down this way, see if we can find anything. The stock clings to the edge of the nearby outcrop away from the loose sand of the central reef. I mean... Again, I do I do want to try and get more shrill sacks. It'd probably be useful to go and get more stock bark as well, though, but it's fine. It's fine for now. Um, that's why I decided to take it with me, so it's it's okay. Yeah, there's more shrill sacks, so I'm gonna go gonna go grab them quickly. Okay, there is a third one. Right. So now we got six of them. Okay. And I think we'll I think we'll be good to go then. These are just for clearing some of the spores out of the way if we come across any later on. Split gullies. These gullies lead among the tall outcrops of the northern edge to the currents and open waters beyond. Alright. Hopefully there are no strong currents over here if I can actually keep going. Let's make our way east to the source of that transponder signal. I don't know what to expect. If the transponder is Manea's, there's some history between us. But I still haven't seen her in years. Not since... Look, you don't need to worry about it. Let's just find her. Something tells me that signal is not actually Mine, but let's 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 just be hopeful for now. Let's be optimistic about this. Gully opening. Here the gully opens out into one of the rifts, cutting deep into the bedrock of the reef. And narrow gully. The walls here have been so have been smoothed into soft ripples, the sign of a strong current descending from the north. Let me try going over this way. We do have to proceed east, so might as well. Okay, yeah, I see him. Yeah, we got some spores in our way here. 
Strong current, these stocks block the gully, but also the strong currents behind. Even if we clear them, these currents will still block our passage. Uh. Okay, well, in that case, we may actually need to go back the other way then. So I did figure out what this is actually useful for. For nodes that we've already discovered, we can actually just use this little uh, circular object right here in order to just uh, go back to a node that we've already that we've already been to. Yeah, see? So that way we don't have to continuously scan the area. We can just rotate this around and then there we go. We'll be on our way. Oh god, is there another strong current here or is that just from... There, look, a cave entrance cut into the side of the rift. It should allow us to bypass the rift, although I'm not sure where we'll emerge. Oh, okay. So what does this say? Rift Edge. The sheer walls of the rift plunge into the dark water here, and rapid currents make passing through difficult, if not impossible. Hidden Shelf. Protected by sheer sides of the rift, this shelf leads down to a small cavern entrance in the reef wall. Alright. This is one we haven't discovered yet. Yeah, the sense possible. Let's go down. Alright. So where exactly is this gonna take us, then? How far down are we descending here? Uh... Just another 8 meters again? Okay. Well, it's nice and dark now. I like it. I like this mood. Curving passage. The round mouth of the cave stretches away into the rock. Stocks hum quietly in the dark. Right. Gonna have to move, da move down this way, because this appears to be another strong current down over here, kind of blowing some spores around. Unnatural cave. There's a strange evenness to the walls of this cave, almost as if it was a vast borehole drilled into the reef. There's more spores down over here, actually. They're kind of, like, aligned up against the walls. Interesting. Stock patches. The stocks even seem to get down here. Perhaps they are less reliant on sunlight than I initially thought. Yeah, okay, so we already gathered data on these guys. Can't, can't extract any samples from them, it seems. So we'll just keep moving along for now, then. Doesn't seem like my oxygen depletes down here, though, even at a depth of 28 meters. And I imagine we're probably going to need some sort of upgrade to actually go down into the much deeper depths of, uh, of, of this world. So, I would imagine. Crossroads. We are deep in the rock now. What form these hollowed-out caverns with their strange, undulating walls? I'm going to try and keep an eye on my power as well. I wonder how the stocks survive without sunlight. Maybe they're fed by the forest above. What do you think? I mean, perhaps? It would make sense, a network of colonies tunneling through the entire shelf. Well, let's keep exploring for now. Okay, this is a signal stock, but there's no there's no uh, sample gathering from these guys, apparently. Glittering stock, protecting a small underground colony, this tall stock signature coating bubbles uh, glints in the dark. Narrow passage, the cave starts to get tight here, and in the shadows ahead, stocks crowd the tunnel. Okay, what's down here first? This appears to be splintering off somewhere. Okay, no, we can actually still sample these guys. Okay, never mind then. Didn't tell me I could, but... Yeah, I'd like some more shrill sacks. If you don't mind. Thank you very much. Give them all to me. Okay, we're already full. Alright, that's good enough then. We can go over this way. Exposed roots. A cave in has severed some sections of the stock's root network, stretching down from the forest above. What can they tell us? Okay, this is definitely a dead end. Although there does appear to be something else down there. Okay, there's more sampling that we can get here. Oh, but we're full now, though. Ah, oh, crap. Okay, how many How many of them are there? One. Two. Okay, there's only two. Okay, so I got rid of some of the shrill sacks then in that case because we, uh... I, I feel like this is something important that we, that we really want to, uh, pick up here. Yeah, it says question mark, question mark, question mark. So this is something I haven't discovered yet. I would like this. So these are... Does it say? A stock root. A tangle of silken roots from a stock colony, carbon enriched. Okay. Uh, I don't want to de I don't want to deploy this right now though. No, thank you. I'm I'm fine. I think I'll just hang on to them for now until I until I actually need them. In the meantime, I would like to go down over here. And I just would like to keep making progress. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna have to clear these guys out though. Mesh of stalks. The stalks here are thick and intertwined. Underground in the dark, in the stark light of the headlamps, they resemble brittle, oversized worms. Alright. So I'm gonna need to use this then, in that case. There we go. Get out of the way, please. Let's keep going. 
for now. What else do we have here? Open cavern. Bright light from the east of this large cavern is broken up by tall pillars, casting strips of light and dark across the smooth walls. Move over that way then. Got even more spores lining up the walls here. Alright. What else do we have? Another another node broken pillar? These pillars punctuate the cavern, stalks crowded around their bases. They support the vast weight of the reef above. Move down over that way. I mean, there's not really anything else we can do right now, but just keep moving on. Actually, what is this? What in the world is that thing? Sporing stock. These dome stalks are pumping out clouds of short-lived spores. They look like oversized mushrooms. These stalks are filling the water with spores. We should start logging information on them. Hey, probably should. So we can sample them. These bloated creatures are pumping clouds of spores out into the water. Around them, stock colonies rise out of the sand. Okay. I'm gonna grab at least one sample from you, because I only have enough room in my inventory to grab one, unfortunately. We'll see about this here. Grab one of them. Yeah, this is something we haven't seen yet. Signal 15%, fungal 10%. Alright, so what do we get here? These spores are different. The stalks nearby seem to be stimulated by them. Could these spores be used to make stalks extend, to bring them out of hiding? We should test them out on a retracted colony. Oh, okay. Well, I see some retracted colonies, actually, so what is this? A clump of spores which seem to stimulate stalk growth. Okay, uh, I'll place them right here. Yeah, it makes them grow. Interesting. Alright, it makes them grow back. Well, we can actually get another sample now that we've used up that one. So, let's, uh... Oh, Sood Spore. Okay. Well... There's another, another colony right here that could use some regrowth. Nice. And do we have another sample that we can grab? No, that's that's all of them. Okay. There was only there was only two. Alright, well we grew all of these guys back at the very least. Yeah, more reef stalks. Actually, there's another one right over here. Unlike other stalk spores which survive until they settle, the spores from these stalks dissolve moments after they released. And what is this node? Thinning stalks. These stalks seem to be shriveling up. Is it because they're too exposed to the rift's withering currents? Well, they're not anymore. I, I regrew them. With the suit spores. It should be all fine and good now. Hopefully. Here's another one of them. These sporing stalks seem to require very particular conditions to grow. I've seen so few elsewhere on the reef. This long stalk sits quietly beside a dying colony. Soon there won't be anything left for it to protect from scavengers. What is this node? Pulsating growth. These large growths seem to be sustaining this colony with their spores. Perhaps they carry nutrients, even chemical signals. Well, I could probably... No, I'm gonna I'm gonna need another one, because there's, there's more, more spores that need to be regrown here. Yeah, so I'm gonna grab another sample from you then, in that case. Here we go. Grab this one. I'm gonna use it on these right here. Alright, very good. And then I could probably just grab another one from you. Yeah, this is the, the only other one. I'll take it with me for now. Alright. I still don't quite understand what these stock roots are for, though. It doesn't seem like they're particularly useful for anything right now. Tunnel mouth. The far side of the cavern narrows into darkness. I can feel the faint pulse of a distant current ahead. Alright, well let's move over that way. And more spores? Smooth passage. A current must have once run down this tunnel, scraping the walls into smooth lines. Now the stalks block the flow. Oh, and they're also blocking... Yeah, they're blocking the passage. Okay, well, I know what to do here. I know what to do here. Stock blockage. The tunnel ahead is thick with stalks, scraping the ceiling with their rounded tips. That's fine. That's okay. I know how to deal with this. Get out of my way, please. There we go. Victor's clear now. But then we could just regrow them again, because I have that Sood Spore, but... Maybe I should hold on to that for now. Maybe it wouldn't be a great idea to use it right now. Bright Passage. Light filters in from a large opening, making the spores drifting in the water glitter like sparks. Well, that sounds very pretty. Another one? Glittering Stock. Tucked behind this pillar, perhaps this stock grew here as an early warning for predators coming through the cave mouth? It seems like we can sample them as well. Oh, I see that. Yeah, okay. 
Actually, I think I... I think I know what to use this on, if I'm not mistaken, but just hang on a minute. Hang on a moment. This is another shrill sack, right? Just in case I need it. I want it. Okay, so let's let's inspect this first. Strong currents. The cave mouth ahead leaves this passage exposed to the full force of the northern current. Blocking it somehow will help us pass. Yeah, and I know exactly how, how to take care of that. There we go. Very nice indeed. So hopefully... Okay, yeah, it's it's slowing down the spores significantly, but we should be able to pass through now, hopefully. Indeed, we can. So let's just go on through here. The stalks block the current. These spores encourage them to extend and fill the tunnel. With these sued spores, we can control the stalks to our advantage. This will be useful. It seems like there's more that we can gather as well. Sporing stock. There's a, there's a definite correlation between struggling stock colonies and these sporing stocks. Are they helping support these colonies? Another one of these groats, supporting a smaller colony at the cavern's edge. Is there a logic to where these grow? A pattern? And what is this one down here? Covered shelf? Tucked into the rift wall, this shelf allows protection from the fast-flowing water cutting through the rock into the heart of the reef. Okay, I think I'd like to go towards this, this pulsating growth right here. Just so that I can grab another one of these sewed spores, just in case I need one for later. Thank you very much. Okay, cool. So, let's go over here then, in that case. Let's keep going down. Oh, I see something. Look, out in the rift, a retracted stock colony. If we can get them to extend, they'll provide shelter from the current. Oh, well, good then. Glad I picked this up. Let's, uh, place this over here. Nice. Okay, cool. So, let's keep on going then, in that case. What is this? Northern current. The water from the north runs hard and fast down the reef here, bringing with it a blizzard of amber spores. And what about this one? Small colony, a handful of stocks cling to the rift wall here, blown into spiraling shapes by the rushing currents. I probably want to go down over here, though. I don't think I just want to, want to like, dive straight into the current, do I? I don't think that's what I want. Or is it going to force me to? Spattered with spores, the wall here feels the full force of the current. Perhaps it can be slowed upstream somehow. West rift wall. Well, we already did that, actually. So we can just... We, can, we should be able to go here now. Indeed. Should be fine. Hopefully? Deep rift. Even this close to the wall, the darkness of the deep rift is intimidating. A huge slit in the face of this world. How deep does it go? Well, let's find out then. I don't think we should be swimming upstream, right? Oh god. Okay, what is this? Okay, yeah, there's, there's more retracted colonies here, though. If the current can be slowed or navigated, this is the place to do it. Where the rift narrows and a cap opens up on a gap opens up on both sides. Okay, well wait, wait. That means we're that means we have to go back and get another one. I don't know where the I don't know what these stock these uh these stock roots do though. I don't know if that can be used to like give me more power or whatever. I have no idea. You know how about I get rid of this other shrill sack over here, just so I can I can hang on to the other uh, suit spore. I can pick this one up. There we go. That's all that's left. Okay, so that vector is actually blocked off over there. The one that I the one that I already uncovered. Okay. So in that case, yeah, we're gonna have to go down this way then. Right, here we go. We'll be able to continue onwards now, hopefully. Yeah, this rift crossing is still clear. Alright. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna use this. Right over here. Very good indeed. Alright, let's just close this for now. There, that should have hopefully slowed it down just enough. That we can get through East Rift Wall. A huge pillar sits out from the wall here. It's top cake and retracted stalks. A golden garden waiting to emerge. It already did emerge. We grew it back. Open Rift. Currents slice down through the rift from the north here. Crossing is going to be difficult unless their flow can be slowed further up. Well, we do have another one. So we should be fine. Hopefully. Yeah. Actually, hang on a second. Do we, have we already seen this? Oh yeah, we did actually just circle back. We did just circle back. I don't think there's any other, uh... Yeah, no other, no other nodes to be found here, okay. So do we have to start moving our way upwards then, in that case? Actually, wait a second, there is something over here, I noticed, because this line of stalks extends further into this, like, little, little cave over here. Rift Cave. The small opening in the wall provides a little shelter from the Howling Rift, allowing some stocks to take up root here. 
Is there anything else hiding over here? We are across. Thank you, Stocks. Oh, and thank you to you, too. Of course, because I'm the one who helped out, after all. Bear Passage. Another smooth tunnel leads out towards the light. Okay, let's, let's just see what's over here. If there's anything. Cave Mouth. A circle of warm light shows, shows this tunnel opens out into the upper shelf of the East Reef. What lies above? Well, we're gonna find out right now. It does seem like we can ascend back up, so let's do it. Let's go back upwards. Into 20 meters. Oh, wow, okay. That looks really pretty. What is this over here? Stock canopy. These stalks are twisted together into a huge canopy. Incredible! They are pulsing as the pores across their surface open and close. These canopies are spectacular. I'll start logging observations. Let's see what we can find out about them. Alright. And then... The bright petals? These bright white petals appear to be photosynthetic plants. They float on long stems, shifting and swaying in the water. These are beautiful plants, single petals shifting in the sunlight. Let's start logging data on them. Alright, so I imagine... I, I imagine these are probably... They don't have to be regrown? I'm not entirely sure. Blooming petals. Sample candidate. These plant-like creatures seem unrelated to the reef stalks. They're soft petals waving on thin stems. Well, let's go investigate them. They sound interesting enough. It feels good to be out in the sunlight again. Let's head northeast along this finger of the reef. The transponder is at the tip. Okay. So, sampling. Okay, you know what? This stalk root. Can I actually, like, use this to power myself up? Ah, uh, okay. I can use it to replenish my, my suit's power. Okay. I was kind of thinking that, actually. I could probably use that to, to do something with my with my power level here. Okay, so, in that case, let's uh, get some sampling here. What do we have now? Plant 10%, seed 10%. I can still only pick up one, though. <laughs> this is... Bright Pollen. Furred pollen extracted from petals in the East Reef. Actually, I'm just kind of wondering... Actually, no. The Shrill Sack wouldn't be good for that. The uh, Suit Spore would, though. Maybe I should hold on to that for now, though. I don't know. I feel like I should. Yeah, I'm just gonna hold on to all of that stuff for now. I don't want to mess with it right now. Bright petals. While each plant seems to have a single wide petal, they group together, forming fields of blooms all angled towards the sun. Stock barrier. A colony of stalks has twisted itself tightly across this gap in the rocks. Could they be protecting something? Still sands. The fractured outcrops all break up all around break up the worst of the northern current, protecting the sandy shelf. Okay, well I think I would like to go over here. Yeah, because that that vector is blocked off. And actually I see another way station up to the northeast. What well, looks like another way station at least. Okay, well, well let's investigate all this stuff first. The coloration of these canopies is much lighter than other stalks. They grow, they glow pale yellow in the light of Gleese 667CC's three suns. Now I'm kind of wondering, is Gleese 667CC an actual exoplanet that exists within our solar system? Because that's kind of what I was one, what what I was wondering for a, a good amount of time. Because I know that there is in fact a Gleese catalog of exoplanets that exists in our real universe. I wonder if this might be based on an actual exoplanet, though. Because I know that in Mendel, which was uh, another game that I covered sometime last year, I know that the planet that Mendel took place on was based on an actual exoplanet. One of the exoplanets in the Kepler catalog, specifically. I'm kind of wondering if Glee667CC might also be an actual exoplanet that exists within our, our own realm. I imagine it's probably, uh, this is probably not, like, an accurate rendition of the exoplanet, but I I'm just kind of wondering if the name itself has been assigned to a real exoplanet in our own realm. I I'd have to go and look that up after I'm done recording this. Which, by the way, I will be ending this video very soon, because I've actually been recording for two hours already. But bright petals. The petals seem to shimmer as they twist and open. It's difficult to tell if this is involuntary or part of the plant's own movement. Stock structure. This towering canopy of woven stalks pulsates in the soft current, the sunlight slipping through the gaps in its branches. Alright, and then what about this other node? The outcrops on this shelf are cut through with huge cracks as if somehow they were shattered. What could have done this? I want to go to this one over here. Because it seems like it opens up into something else, actually. Oh yeah, there's a whole bunch of other things to, to scan here. High up in the white canopy, I can see that the stalks are twisted around strange ribbed growths. What are they holding up there? On some petals, there is a thick clump of pollen on the lower part. I wonder how this is dispersed. 
It seems too heavy to float away. And new species log, Shimmer Blooms. Wide single petal plants that come in a variety of hues. They appear to be primarily photosynthetic and produce a heavy furry looking pollen. I'm going to name these plants Shimmer Blooms for the way they catch the sunlight. I wish I could share these discoveries with Manet. There's still so much to say. What about this other node? Shimmering Field. Bright petals line this part of the reef, shimmering and swaying, parting easily as I pass along their delicate forms. Okay, well, I'd kind of like to go over to this broken gully, actually. Yeah, let's try going over, over that way. Okay, hang on a second. I guess I'll have to go to this vector first. Oh no, it allowed me to select that vector, but it didn't allow me to travel to it for some reason. Okay, so this, this appears to be blocked off. Stock colony. Stocks have grown across this gully, reconnecting the two huge pieces of rock that look like they must have been one. Okay, well, since I'd rather not waste any of my items right now, I think I'll go back over here, and then... Yeah, we'll, we'll travel down this way, since the, the opening for this place is already not blocked off, so... Yeah, so let's try going over this way, then, in that case. Oh yeah, there's another one of these little big guys over here. Little big guys, great. Contradictory statements. Okay, stock canopy. This canopy has many gaps between its higher stalks, as if something has fallen out or been removed from it. And then, the reef cap. Domed mushroom-like stalks which appear to support struggling stalk colonies with a supply of special spores. With their strong resemblance to ter to ter 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 Wow! With their strong resemblance to terrestrial mushrooms, I'm gonna call those reef caps. Somehow I was able to read it before it disappeared. I don't even know anymore. <laughs> Thriving colony. Fed by spores, shielded by a colony of stalks, this part of the reef seems to have fostered the ideal conditions for its own survival. Okay, well I can't go down over this way, so I'll have to I'll have to go up north for now. Let's go up this way then in that case. Is that another way station ahead? My name must have built them all across the reef. Yeah, it does appear to be another one. Central clearing. In the center of this shelf is a beautiful clearing, screened from currents and predators. No wonder Mine set up a way station here. Alright, well let's go investigate it then. There's gotta be something here. Yeah, there's another one of these things that we can uh, scan. Table stalk. Towering canopies of stalks entwined around ripped growths. They pulse as their pores systematically open and close. I've named these table stalks after the table corals they remind me of. I'll log my notes back at the base. Alright, well, here is that way station. In the scattered shadows of golden canopies and knee-deep in shimmering petals, this way station sits silent. Let's investigate it. Okay, open up the terminal, see what data we can scrape from this place. Alright, terminal. Uh, yeah. Supplement my power. And I guess my oxygen too, even though I really don't have to. Map data. Let's see what we got this time. Sync complete, data released to pilot's console. The log suggests my Nate was using this as some kind of staging ground for expeditions after the drop-off, or over the drop-off. She was looking for something out in the ocean, something deep from the sense she logged there. Mene doesn't do things at random. The way stations, the research base, this is calculated. I feel like we're already ten steps behind her, and we've barely even started. Let's get to that suit transponder. It isn't far from here. If we head straight north to the shelf's edge, it should be there. Oh, okay, so we're not gonna- we're not gonna stay here then? Okay. Well, let's keep going. I wanna at least try and find the suit transponder first before I end the video off. Split outcrop. Like many of the large rocks on this shelf, this outcrop has been split, creating a passage to the east and another to the north. Okay. Let's keep moving up this way. Yeah, I got another one of these guys here. Okay, so there's two different paths we can take. Pulsing growth, yeah, sample candidates, surrounded by shimmering petals, a pulsating stalk pumps out spores. Do these carbon-rich particles feed plants too? Open passage, a swirl of sand suggests this passage leads to the reef edge and the open water beyond. Okay, can I look in my inventory? Yeah, we already have a bunch of stuff in here. Okay, I think I'm gonna go over this way, actually. I wanna at least get that suit transponder and then we'll be, we'll be good after that. Right, what can we scan here? Already scanned these guys. Exposed clearing. The side of the finger feels exposed, but thanks to its current splitting outcrops, it remains in a bubble of calm. Sue transponder must be very close by now, because this appears to be where, uh, yeah, where the where the top section ends, where this like uh shallow section ends. Open ocean. At the tip of the shelf, the outcrops fall away to reveal an unrestricted view of the vast ocean. It is both terrifying and beautiful. 
And that kind of looks like the suit transponder, actually. I see something at the edge. Is that... the suit? Uh-oh. And if that was my... that is my nay suit, I was about to ask. Open, empty, and half-sunken sand. Why would she leave it here? And more importantly, where did she go? Huh. That's very strange. It's definitely my nay suit, but no my nay. Oh, okay, I didn't want to- I didn't mean to, to scan something else there. Sorry about that. Surely she isn't- Oh, okay. Let's not jump to conclusions. I want to take a look at this. It can't have been here long. Most of it is still in good condition. But how did it get out here? There's no evidence of injury. A malfunction, perhaps? What do you think? I have... I, I honestly don't know. No, you're right. And she left it on purpose. Abandon it. Did she intend us to find it? My nay. What did you get yourself into here? It's better equipped than our suit, but the seals have started decaying. What's this? My nay has rigged up some kind of custom propulsion system, probably to deal with the currents. We can use this. We'll need a power source. It won't run off the suit system. It seems like she fashioned some kind of microbial fuel cell. We'll need to recreate that if we want to use it. Okay, let's get this back to the base so I can take a better look. My nay. You better not have done something stupid. I didn't come all the way out here to bury you. Let's go. Call for drone pickup. Alright. Do we still have the... Oh, okay, wait. We can't actually go back, can we? Or can we? No, we actually cannot. Okay. Well, I'll just... I'll establish the link then. Alright, connect us to the drone. Ah, the drone's ready? Okay, let's go. Let's get out of here. Alright, so now we're back at the lab. Yes, booting back up in safe mode, restarting. Downtime, 3.6 hours. Alright, well, we're back here. Back with me? Indeed? Good to hear. Let me update you. I've spent the past few hours working on my nay suit. Bad news is the majority of it is unusable. Apart from that propulsion system my nay pulled together, but we're gonna need a power source. My nay's suit logs mention her rebuilding a fuel cell using microbes from the Western Reef. But they don't say much else. She's been incredibly secretive while she was here, covering her tracks across the reef as if there was someone watching, or she's just... I don't know. The my nay I knew is tricky, complicated, but not paranoid. Either way, if we want to recreate her propulsion system, we'll need those microbes. When you're ready, let's head to the Western Stock Forest and see what we can find. Oh, okay, so we're gonna have- to, we've already seen the Western Stock Forest before, so I guess I'm gonna have to go back there. Okay, well, in that case, let's drop off some more of our, uh, yeah, more of our- our shrill sacks for the time being. Okay, cool. Maybe I'll hold on to these things for now, because they might come in handy later. Yeah, I'm not sure how large of a stack you can make, though, because I'm already up to 11. I don't know if this is like Minecraft, where you can have, like, stacks of 64. I have no idea. Or maybe the stacks go even... go even higher than that? I'm not really sure, but I have 11 of these so far, so... Let's, uh, take a look at the lab. Taxonomy. Oh yeah, there would definitely be more... more stuff that we, uh... That we've, uh, discovered here, right? Yeah, here we go. We got some new stuff. Table stock. Uh, just gonna let you guys read that, because I'm not gonna read it myself. Just pause the video. Root sample, growth sample required. Okay. Wait, we got- we got another one, the reef cap. There's a description. Need spore sample and a tissue sample, and study completion is also required. So we do finally have a plant here. We have, uh, punctifolia? Okay. Uh, wait, why is this one- Okay, wait, wait, wait. Why does this one have a little, like, like, circle around it? And why was I not able to click on it at first? Shimmer blooms. Okay, so there's the description. Yeah, we need pollen sample, a shoot sample as well. Okay. And we still don't have any, uh, bacteria novi currently. We haven't discovered any bacteria, but we do have a plant now. Right, so what else could we possibly, uh... Actually, wait. I just remembered. Um, Ellery told us to go and, uh, possibly scan the stock bark, right? Didn't- didn't Ellery tell us something about, uh, scanning the stock bark that we were holding on to before? Like, scan it in the lab? I actually just realized this. I forgot to do this before. Can we- can we do this now? 
Yeah, she told us to go and do this, like, like an hour ago, though, and I forgot to do it. Yeah, multiple taxonomy entries updated. And actually, we could probably do this with all of the items, right? Oh, yes, okay, we have taxonomy entries for them now. Okay, so hang on a minute. Hang on a second, then. Okay, well, why are there, why are there lines through them now? Is that, can we still use them? Okay, yeah, we can, we can. Okay, okay. Hang on a second. I want to keep that in the base. I want to hold on to this. Okay. So hold on a minute. I want to go and scan some stuff very quickly then. Because it seems like I can... I can scan all the other things too. Okay. I know what this is useful for now. Okay, scan the stock route. Okay. Reef stock taxonomy upgraded. Or updated. Okay. Sued spore. Alright. Reef cap. And then... The bright pollen. Okay, Shimmer Bloom's updated. Okay, so I'm glad I held on to this stuff then. Because I, I just remembered that Ellery told me to go and scan this stuff if I got a hold of it. Like anything that I got a hold of. And I completely forgot to do it. So, yeah, we got some updated entries. Okay, now I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go and show them here very quickly then. I'm gonna put this back in my suit for now. All this stuff goes back in. Okay. Yeah, let's, let's check out those entries then. Taxonomy. Stock Scraper. Behavior. Oh, okay. So this is how we how we understand their behavior. We need to sample the items themselves. That's how we get those entries. Okay, I get it now. I understand. But again, I'm not going to read it because, you know, just way too long. It'll just take way too long for me. Just feel free to pause the video. Here's the behavior description for Stock Scraper. Oh, wait, we actually have a theory entry here. Okay. Well, theory entry for Reef Stock. Here's the behavior for Sing Stock right here. The behavior for signal stock, the behavior for reef cap, and finally, the behavior for shimmer blooms. Alright, so now that you're done pausing the video and reading through all of their behaviors, and also a couple of theories as well, I do believe. Well, actually, hang on a second. Okay, well, the dive map, let's look at the dive map here just to see what we've, uh, what we've drawn in. My god, man. I l the scale of this map is so much larger than I expected it to be, because look how much we've already, like, uh... We've already drawn in here. And we do have two different way stations that we could dive at right now. And we do need to go to the western stock forest next, so it would be best to, to uh... To try and dive at the central reef way station. But yeah, we're really starting to... Really starting to, like draw all the map in right now. We're, we're starting to draw, like, much larger sections of the map in. It's it's starting to get really big. Yeah, there appears to be, like, a formation of, uh... Yeah, a sample request right here. Okay, can we... We can sample a shoot right here, so the sample request... There's, like, little... Little islands all the way over here. We should definitely go in and check out later on. What about this, uh... Yeah, what is this? Okay, so there is, uh, a second entry right here. Personal log number two for Ellery Vass. Okay. So this this apparently takes place in the year 2216. That's when this game takes place in. Okay, what is this? Ke when I met her on Kepler 62F? Oh, so this is this is referencing other exoplanets. I'm pretty sure Kepler 62F is a real exoplanet as well, isn't it? I'd have to go and check all of this just to make sure cuz I know that Kepler and Gliese are actual catalogs for exoplanets. I'd have to see if Kepler-62f is a real exoplanet, though. Because I feel like these are referencing actual planets that exist within our our galaxy. I'm familiar with the Kepler and Gliese catalog of exoplanets, so... Yeah, this, this has to be a reference to actual planets that exist, like, outside of our solar system. It has to be. Yeah, and then, the, it's, it's just telling me that the dive map is where we need to... Yeah, where we need to go next, because the... The thing that we have to sample in the Western Stock Forest. Yeah, signal priority. In Mine's notes on her microbial fuel cell design, she mentions sourcing four microbe colonies from this part of the reef. But, for now though, Gaia's... Uh, yeah, we're not gonna do any of that. Okay, that's that's all we had to check, though. Alrighty then. Yeah, and it's actually telling me that Ellery is in here, because I just noticed. Yeah. See the little yellow dot that says EV right here? That means Ellery Vass. So she is the one who's walking around in here. Okay, like in inside this laboratory. Yeah, med subject, there's still nothing we can do with that. Generator's still running at 34% efficiency. Then the observation blister is still inactive, and we can't currently reactivate it. There's not really anything we can do with that right now. Yeah, and the 
comm signal is- the- the antenna on the comm signal is still damaged. I'm not entirely sure how to fix it right now, though. But with all that said and done, guys, I do believe we are gonna end this video now. I mean, we can also see, uh, we can also view a message log here as well, actually. I just noticed. Oh yeah, and the message log, we can keep track of everything that, uh, of everything that Ellery has said throughout our entire adventure, actually. Holy crap. This message, message log is massive. Yeah, so we can, like, keep track of all the, all the different messages that we've seen in the game. But for now, though, I do believe... Oh yeah, there's also, um, some keyboard shortcuts that I forgot to talk about as well. Yeah, space to scan, control, scan off, W for set heading and move. Alright, well anyway, I think we're gonna save and quit to the menu for now, though. Because I do believe that I am done for the time being. I'm just out of curiosity. Oh, we already have 12% of the, uh, taxonomy completed. Yeah, an hour and 49 minutes. So there's a lot more to, uh, to go through here, then. There's definitely a lot more to see, so... Only 12% complete right now. Anyway, that's where I'm gonna end things off for now, guys. So, that is In Other Waters. Or that's, like, a, a, a quick look, I guess. Or, like, the first two hours or so of the game. That was very interesting. That was a really neat take on the whole, uh, narrative-driven adventure game genre. It's like a nice, serene, underwater adventure where you get to discover different forms of alien life, while also trying to uncover a much deeper, darker mystery at the same time. Again, I really love the minimalism on display here, because the different forms of alien life are represented in the form of, like, tiny dots, and all the much bigger creatures are represented by, you know, much larger dots. Again, I've never really seen any video game try to use this, like, topographic map design with all these contour lines to try and simulate the game's environment. It's a very simple design on the surface, admittedly, yeah, but it's still one of the most unique art styles that I have seen in a game. I like how all the contour lines are also shaded differently to represent elevated surfaces or even deeper surfaces. Like all of the gigantic rifts in the ocean floor have a much darker shade of coloring. And even when you're descending deeper into a cave system, the environment around you also grows darker as well. And as I've mentioned before, you can descend into much deeper depths in this game than just 28 meters. And I know that when you're going into the absolute farthest reaches... Or, or is that even the correct term, farthest reaches? Well, when you're going into the deepest depths of the waters of Glee 667cc, the entire environment around you eventually becomes pitch black, and the only thing that's really lighting the way are all of the yellow stalks that you come across. Again, I only know that based on screenshots. Like I said, this video was entirely blind, or at least it was like 98% blind, because the only part of the game that I had played before I recorded this video was the intro sequence, which is only like five minutes of gameplay, so that was like the only part of the video that was actually like an informative style walkthrough, but everything else I had no idea about, I wasn't aware of. I do kind of wish, though, that you were able to just move anywhere you wanted to within the game's environment, because it seems like in order to move around, you have to scan for all of these noids, and then you have to travel to said node by aligning this little, like, like, circle or whatever on your scanner, and then you can move to the node, assuming the vector is clear, and it's not being blocked off by stocks or any other sort of object that's in the way. Because it kind of seems that Ellery can only move in a straight line. She can't, like, turn at all. And that does kind of bug me, admittedly. I really do wish that you had, like, complete freedom over your movement in this game, but unfortunately, you don't. It seems like you're forced to follow all of these individual nodes that you have to scan for, but then once you do finally scan them, you can just move back to them by, you know, using the little circular object, so that way you don't have to keep constantly scanning for new nodes. All the ones that you've already discovered, you can just you know, move on back to immediately without having to scan them. So that's the only real gripe that I have with this game. I mean, if there is one little thing that I've noticed as well, it does seem like some of the dialogue in this game contains a few typos here and there, so I feel like the developers should probably go ahead and fix that as well in a future update. Don't get me wrong, most of the dialogue in this game is very well written, but I've noticed some inconsistencies here and there. I noticed that some words are not capitalized properly, Properly, and some words don't have any spaces in between them. I also noticed that in one of the taxonomy descriptions, the word sued spore was spelled with four O's instead of three, 
So it ended up sounding like Sood Spore. Like there's an extra O in the word Sooth that isn't supposed to be there. So that's just a couple of the inconsistencies I noticed, but that's just mostly nitpicking. But it would be a bit nice if there was, uh, you know, a little bit more proofreading in the game's dialogue. Not a massive issue, but, you know, just wanted to point that out. Because I already know that there's probably gonna be some other people who are gonna complain about it, so... Again, not a massive issue, but that's just something to note there. And other than that, I think that's all I really have to say about this game, actually. So, I I'm definitely intrigued by the game's story, and I'm very interested to see where it goes from here, so... I'm definitely gonna play this game more in my spare time off-screen, like whenever I have the time to, and this time I actually mean it, because I know that I've said this so many times at the end of my other videos, it's like, oh yeah, I'm definitely gonna play this a lot more off-screen, and then I don't end up touching the game for like two years. <laughs> it will be different with this game, though. I'm actually very interested to see where exactly this go is. It does seem like there is a lot more to this game than I initially thought, though. It seems like it does go on for a lot longer. It goes on for a much longer time than just two hours, so... I'm gonna try and stick with the game as best as I possibly can, no matter how long it takes me to complete it, and... Yeah, I'll just see how it unfolds from there. Again, I'm not gonna be doing a full playthrough of this, though. This is just gonna be a simple one-shot video, but... I'll definitely play it more in my spare time, because I really want to see how exactly this story pans out. For now, though, if you want to purchase this game, there are multiple links in the description. The game was released on both PC and Nintendo Switch, so it's not exclusive to any platform in particular. If you want to play it at home or even take it on the go with you, you can absolutely do that by getting the Switch version, although uh, taking it wherever you want to go is probably uh, not a good idea right now, you know, because of the, the virus. But just keep that in mind, if you want a portable version of this game that you can take wherever you want, you absolutely can, because it is available on the Switch as well. Anyway, that's all I've got for now, guys. Thanks as always for watching. I'll see you in the next video I make. Later!